Some of you may remember back in 2006 and 2007, uh, we created a strategic plan uh, for the medical school and uh, Mount Sinai Hospital. A lot, a lot has happened uh, since then, uh, but it was a highly successful strategic plan uh, through the leadership of Peter May and our other board uh, members and, uh, and Mark Costigan and his team. Uh, we concluded a, a, a very successful capital campaign where we raised $1.5 billion. We created a new research building, the Hess, science, uh, the Hess Building for Science and Medicine. 18 multidisciplinary institutes recruited well over 100 research faculty. And if you look at you know, the metrics um, of our school in terms of the quality of our students, the medical students, graduate school um, uh, students, our postdocs, uh, the new fa the faculty we recruited, uh, we've been in on, on an upward trajectory uh, since that uh, strategic plan. And as I'll mention at the end of my presentation, we're, gonna, we're doing it again. Uh, we are in the midst of developing another strategic plan for the health system and the medical school, and uh, we'll inaugurate another capital campaign uh, starting next year. So it's a very exciting time for our health system and our medical school. So how are we doing this year? First, in terms of quality, particularly the quality of our physicians and the, the care that we give and the research that we conduct. And if you look at objective uh, measures, we're doing very well. Uh, we have more doctors listed in the best doctors in New York than any other health system in New York City. In terms of NIH funding, which is the coin of the realm because it's very competitive, we continue to rise at, at a rate that is much greater, multiples of the annual increase in NIH funding. Uh, in 2015, uh, we increased uh, from 265 million in 2014 to nearly 290 million in 2016. So we're doing very well. And in fact, a number of our departments are ranked in the top 10 in the United States in terms of NIH funding. That includes microbiology under the leadership of Peter Pelosi, which is number one, emergency medicine number two, pharmacology number three, neuroscience number three, pediatrics number three, rehab number six, and genetics number eight. So we're going in the right uh, direction. Another statistic that I like um, is that we, when you look at the research dollars per scientist among, in private medical schools in the United States, we rank number one in the country. And many of our faculty have received very important uh, recognition. Uh, Joseph Buck, Bus, Buxbaum was inducted into the National Academy of Medicine. And while we can't formally announce what's going to happen this year, I expect that at least two members of our faculty will be inducted into the National Academy of Medicine uh, in the coming year. We've had enormous growth of our faculty. Um, in part, that relates to the, uh, the acquisition of the Continuum uh, Health System. We are now probably the largest medical school in the country in terms of the number of physicians that are uh, full-time at Mount Sinai. And you can see in 2016, uh, we have over 3,600 uh, uh, faculty, and we expect the growth to continue in the coming year as we expand our health system. We've made some important, new important uh, appointments, particularly at the dean level, uh, where Gary Butts was promoted to dean for diversity programs, policy, and community affairs. We were very fortunate in naming uh, Marta Filizola to be our Dean of the Graduate School of Biomedical Sciences. We promoted Reg Miller to Dean for Research Operations and Infrastructure, and uh, named Eric Nessler uh, to a position that's now very important as we move forward with our strategic plan, uh, Dean for Academic and Scientific Affairs. We've named a couple of new chairs, two of which are being honored today, uh, Joseph Herrera to be Chair of Rehabilitation Medicine, Renee Kahn, Department of Psychiatry, and Pramjot Singh, uh, the founding chair of a new department, which is actually the first department of its kind in the United States, and that is the Department of Health System Design and uh, Global Health. And we uh, have named Joel Dudley 
uh, to uh, lead essentially a new institute, again, one of its first of its kind in the United States, an institute for next generation healthcare to develop novel methods, taking advantage of the digital revolution to improve the kind of care we can provide to our patients. As I mentioned, the quality of our students gets better every year. Uh, our medical students that come to Mount Sinai, uh, based on the really incredible, innovative work of David Muller and his team, uh, is a great group of students who are passionate, intelligent, dedicated, entrepreneurial, innovative. They make us better te teachers. And these are the kind of metrics uh, that we have for the incoming class. And, I think it's fair to say that most of the current faculty wouldn't be able to be admitted to our class because of the high quality, including myself. We always admit 10 to 12 uh, MD, PhD students. Again, very high quality. These are students over the course of seven, eight, and sometimes nine years uh, get an MD and a PhD degree. They're very highly qu qualified. And under the leadership of Margaret Barron, we recruited another outstanding class of MD, PhD students. Lots of accomplishments uh, in medical education. I can't summarize uh, all of it. Uh, this talk will be on our uh, website. Uh, but we, uh, of note, we, it, we matriculated the inaugural class of our FlexMed program. They're entering with the class of two, uh, two th 2020. We've launched an Icon Be Well program to improve the well-being of our students. Uh, so they, they are obviously working very hard, and we want them to also pay attention to their well-being. We've continued to modify our curriculum, and both David Muller and Gary Butts received very uh, important awards in the past year. In terms of graduate medical education, I want to acknowledge the great work of Michael Lightman, uh, who now runs the largest GME program in the United States. 146 program, uh, programs, over 2,200 residents and fellows are sponsored by our uh, medical school. Eight of the programs are ranked in the top 25. Uh, I think it's fair to say that over the next year or two, there'll be more of our programs ranked in the top 25. We're just learning now how these rankings actually occur uh, through the Doximity uh, website. And so uh, I think this actually underrepresents the quality of our uh, training program. We expect this to rise uh, even higher. And most recently, uh, two of our faculty received the highest award for graduate medical education uh, in the United States, and that's the Parker Palmer Courage to Teach Award. Only 10 are given out each year, and two were Mount Sinai faculty this year, Adam Levine and Vicki Lynn Shanker. Congratulations to both of them. PhD class, uh, very strong again, uh, you know, this year, uh, very strong metrics. Uh, but, you know, what's not seen in these numbers is the kind of students they are uh, who are passionate about making discoveries that will change medicine and not just publish great papers and ultimately get grants, but to really transform the way we can treat our most serious diseases. Uh, under MARTA's leadership, uh, we are reimagining uh, the graduate school. We're creating new programs like a Master of Science in Biostatistics. Uh, we matriculated our first cohort in a new master's program of science in bioinformatics. We're partnering with a number of important institutions, notably Xavier University of Louis Louisiana, which is noted for uh, training more uh, ultimately MD students from underrepresented um, groups in the United States. And given our commitment to diversity, this is a very important uh, you know, partnership. Some of the graduate school goals for the coming year, including uh, creating a formal certificate program in commercialization and entrepreneurship, which fits with our mission of science that makes a difference. And we want that, that ethic to really start at the very beginning of our students' you know, career, that they, they work toward making discoveries that are very important. Uh, we've established what I think will turn out to be a very important uh, affiliation with Stony Brook University, uh, where they bring uh, 
to Mount Sinai expertise in computer science and physics and chemistry, you know, that will synergize with our expertise in biomedical research and clinical um, research. We're also continuing to uh, search for and uh, work to develop innovative partnerships that, you know, that really were unheard of uh, several years ago. Uh, as many of you know, life science companies like Amazon and Google and Apple are getting into the healthcare space. And we, f we feel that we, given our culture of innovation and entrepreneurship and the quality of our science, that developing partnerships with these similarly innovative companies uh, can result in, in synergism. And so we've established a academic partnership with Google Life Sciences, and we're exp exploring similar partnerships with uh, other companies that I just mentioned. You know, we are, we're a young medical school, uh, but now we got lots of alumni. And so when you look at how many alumni we have from our medical school, from our graduate school, from our uh, residency programs, uh, we have well over 30,000 alumni. And one of the things that we did not do very well up until the last several years is promote an active engagement uh, with our alumni. And, and over the last two years, we have established an alumni uh, council. Uh, we've developed more outreach to our alum alumni. We want them to feel part of the Mount Sinai uh, community, and we're going to continue to work on that in the coming year. We're working very hard in faculty development related to mentorship of our faculty, promoting well-being among our faculty. Uh, under the leadership of Lakshmi Devi and Elizabeth Howell, uh, we have formal programs to provide uh, uh, curricula programs to develop new leaders, to foster mentoring among all our faculty, and promote uh, collaboration. So you know, here are some numbers that I mentioned before. Uh, in, in terms of our 2015 uh, research funding, this is data that comes from the AAMC. Uh, we are ranked number one in the country among private medical schools in research dollars per scientist. You know, which speaks to the very high quality of the individual scientists at Mount Sinai. Now, this uh, you know is a number that is somewhat problematic, in that as our scientists have gotten more and more grants, our space uh, is not adequate, and so now we're number three in the country in research dollars per square foot. So you know that means we do a good job of allocating space to folks that are very, most successful. But as we work uh, through our strategic plan on our capital campaign, uh, we are going to have to work to increase the available uh, space for our researchers. When you look at the growth of our program, our research program, over the last several years, uh, we are ranked number three in the United States in the growth of our NIH funding among uh, you know, medical schools. So by these objective you know, metrics, we're doing very well, and I want to congratulate our researchers. Now that we're one of the largest health systems in the country, and we take care of probably the most diverse patient population in the United States, literally every ethnic group, every cultural group, every socioeconomic group comes to Mount Sinai for treatment. And as you know, from day one, from when Mount Sinai Hospital was formed in 1852 and the medical school in 1968, our ethic is to provide great care to everybody. This gives us enormous opportunity in terms of conducting population health science research, research related to uh, diversity, research related to many different diseases. Uh, so we are working very hard. We started this uh, when we acquired the continuum system, and that is to expand uh, the clinical research throughout our healthcare uh, system. And so you'll, you'll be seeing evidence of that going forward this year and in the years to come. As I mentioned that you know, we conduct science to make a difference, and in order to really make a difference, we need to commercialize that science, to take the scientific findings and move it toward a new drug, 
a new device, a new vaccine that works for our patients. And in order to do that successfully, we need a very strong tech transfer office, which at Mount Sinai we call Mount Sinai Innovation Partners. Eric Liam, its director, has done a spectacular job. We recruited him several years ago from uh, UCSF, and he has essentially transformed our office. It's working very well with our faculty, developing innovative partnerships uh, with industry. And here are some of the metrics you know, that uh, indicate the success of that office. It's, it's a very important hub uh, at Mount Sinai to take our science and move it forward. D diversity is a core value at Mount Sinai. And as you know, you know that's issues related to uh, uh, bias, unconscious bias, and other forms of bias is a very important topic for our society, and it bears on the kind of the way we train our students, the way we deliver health care. And we recognize in a very open way that racism is a significant public health issue in the United States. It contributes to unacceptable differences in access, quality, and outcomes for people of color. And so we have uh, this year, and we'll expand some of the programs that are described on this slide, so that Mount Sinai, the med our medical school, our health system, is a leader in tackling those problems. From our trainees, in terms of how we teach, in terms of how we deliver care, in terms of our house staff, on, on how we mentor our faculty, and the kinds of access that our patients have to the outstanding care that we provide in the Mount Sinai health system. And I, and I want to recognize the, you know, the great work that Gary Butts, David Muller, Reg Miller, and, and many others um, are, are doing in taking a leadership in this very important area. And we have been recognized for this work. Uh, the Mount Sinai Health System was ranked number three by Diversity Inc. in 2016 among the, the very top hospitals in the country. Insight into Diversity selected the Icon School of Medicine as a recipient for the second year in a row of the Higher Education Excellence in Diversity Award. And the Human Rights Campaign recognized six of the seven Mount Sinai hospitals as leaders in LGBT healthcare equality in 2016. The Mount Sinai faculty practice. Another, another strong year under the leadership of you know, Bert Dreher, who's done a fantastic job. Uh, the faculty practice continues to grow at a very robust rate. It's probably the largest faculty practice in the United States. The operating margin is good, despite uh, a patient mix in terms of insurance and Medicaid that is challenging for us. We've established new sites of our faculty practice in the past year, including our East 85th Street uh, multi-specialty uh, site, and we've been uh, growing the uh, Mount Sinai National Jewish Respiratory Institute footprint, and our urgent care growth has been very good, too. And I really got to recognize Bert and Mike Schaefer and uh, the FPA leadership team in integrating our faculty practice across you know, the healthcare system, which has been challenging because we basically integrated uh, physicians who had been affiliated with three different medical schools into the culture of our faculty uh, practice. And uh, the, the work over the past year has really been uh, spectacular. And we continue to work, and here we do have work to do in, in terms of improving our patient satisfaction scores improving access, we're working toward same-day access uh, for more and more of our specialties, improving our call center, and enhancing the IT systems that link all of us together throughout the healthcare system. Here's data to support uh, my comments, uh, that we continue to have well over 1.2 million ambulatory encounters, over 750 thousand outpatient visits, and you can see the growth over the last several years. Here's where we need to do better, and this uh, is a high priority 
over the coming year to improve our patient satisfaction scores, which relate to access, uh, relate to communication, relate to the quality of the site, uh, all things that we highly value and are going to continue to invest in. We want to be among the very best in the United States when it comes to how our patients perceive the care uh, that they are getting. Mount Sinai Hospital, uh, you know, again, was ranked among the very best in the United States, which reflects the great leadership of David Rich and also the quality of the faculty of our medical school, you know, which work in Mount Sinai Hospital to provide really unprecedented quality of care. Finances, not a, not a topic that everybody looks forward to, but you know you can have great ideas, but if you're not strong financially and you're not disciplined financially, those ideas will not come to fruition. Uh, every year, the medical school's goal is at least a break-even uh, result. That's not easy for a medical school. And I, I want to acknowledge the, really the tremendous work of Steve Harvey, our CFO, and his team in helping us remain disciplined, make the right decisions, make the right investments, uh, you know, so we can accomplish our goals in a fiscally responsible uh, way. So these are the things that are challenges to continued success financially. We need to improve the function of our member hospitals, faculty practice finances. We're going to need to expand our clinical space even uh, further. We're going to need to continue to be as successful as we have been in terms of uh, research uh, grants and pay attention to our uh, capital projects to make sure that they come in on time and under budget. And you know, we need to continue to work hard, as I mentioned, in having our science be commercialized. Because several of our uh, drugs uh, and vaccine that were bringing a lot of revenue uh, to Mount Sinai have come off patent. And we do have a very strong pipeline of drugs that we think will reach the market and bring in a strong royalty stream. Uh, but that's, that remains a challenge for us going forward. To continue to be successful financially and disciplined, our departments can need to continue to do well and have each department, basic science department, clinical department, need to achieve positive financial results. And as you know, as the chairs know and other leaders, uh, Steve and I monitor this weekly, monthly, sometimes daily, because we've got to stay, in, uh, stay on top of how we do uh, financially. And, and you, know, you know, we're not unique in this regard, but when it comes to compensation of our physicians and our scientists, every aspect of compensation does, does need a revenue source. You know, if you're a scientist, you need to get grants. If you're a clinician, you need to be productive. There's just no, no way around that. You know, those are the source of funds that enable us to be successful and to invest in the future. We're going to uh, work to continue to market all the great things you know, we do. I think many of you have noticed uh, our advertisements that have received a lot of positive attention. Uh, and Ken and I and our... Um, Communications uh, department, we're going to continue to work to make sure that our stakeholders, our patients, our peers uh, continue to find out about all the great work we do. And the last thing I want to mention is the, the strategic plan. We've established uh, 35 teams uh, that have established strategic plans at the level of our departments, our divisions, our institutes. Each of those uh, plans was informed by bringing in an external advisory group of experts from around the country. And, and that has really been valuable for several reasons. One is they, these EABs provided really good input to our scientists and clinicians and educators, and 
they found out about the great work that we are doing. So it's been very uh, successful. I established a strategic plan council to review all the plans. We're a little more than halfway through doing, uh, doing that. I can say that we are very impressed by the creativity uh, of the strategic plans that we are receiving. That uh, there's some great ideas in there that I'm sure that are going to continue to continue to you know keep us and move us into the very best research and educational schools in the United Spa uh, States. We expect the plan to be completed by the end of this year. We will present it to our board of trustees so that we can move forward with our uh, capital campaign. In the spirit of time, uh, you know, let me end there and uh, uh, remind you of Sinai Innovations, which is a spectacular conference uh, that we've had over the last several years. I want to acknowledge the great work of Scott Friedman and Rama Iyengar in uh, organizing this conference again this year. Uh, it's, I think it's even better than ever. You know, go to the website and you'll see the guest speakers that we got from around the country and all the. Uh, uh, forums that we're going to have. Please uh, put this on your calendar. And let me again, uh, in closing, thank all of you. Thank our philanthropists. Thank our board of trustees. Thank our faculty. Thank our students for making us do our very best. And a as you'll now um, see, we are honoring today uh, some of the best and brightest at Mount Sinai. Thank you very much.